Welcome to another episode of Print on Demand Wisdom. In this episode, I spoke to Marcus, who is a top seller on Displayed, one of the most underrated print on demand platforms out there. And we discussed how he managed to get approved into the Display program, what sorts of designs sell best for him, how he goes about creating those designs, and also some tips and tricks for getting AI artwork approved when you upload it to Display because that can be quite tricky. When did you start on Display? Um, I started around January last year, 2023. And I first added my application to Display and got accepted like uh, one month later. And that's where I uh, started uploading some designs. Not, not a lot. I started with two or three designs. And I already got a sale like uh, one or two weeks later where I started then uploading consistent. Okay, nice, nice. And what's your, what's your best month on display just to get people interested? <laughs> uh, the best month, uh, I would say like uh, every POD seller uh, would say is uh, Black Friday month, November, and yeah. of course December a bit. But uh, I, I guess the difference on display is there are like, two, uh, like three different time periods where you get uh, a lot of sales which is May, there is a 10 days uh, period from display birthday where you get a lot of sales, uh, the November and the December. But uh, in November, it's like the Black Friday, it's a 10 day sale on display where you get a lot of sales. And on December, it's like the whole month where you get consistent good sales. How many sales did you get? How many? Uh, in, no in November, I had like, uh, in November, it were 4,025 sales with wow. a revenue of uh, $12,000. And yeah, wow. in December- That's really it, impressive. In December, it goes a bit down with $8,000 and like 2,000 sales. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you started in, just to recap, you started in January last year, and in, yes. your, first, in your first November, you made over $10,000. Yes. That's correct, okay, yes. amazing. Um, just for reference as well, I'm selling on display or have been selling for like two to three years now. And I've sold a total of about five and a half thousand displays, which I'm still happy about, but that's yeah. in two years, right? So those are definitely very impressive numbers. And for those people watching who don't know what a display is, uh, I'll, I'll show one on screen, but how would you explain it as well? Like what it is, this is one that I've got. For the people that don't know, it's a, it's like a metal, oops, yeah. a metal poster. The design is wrapped around the edge. You've got some on your background as well, haven't you? That one here, uh, it's one of the new ones. It's a texture. Nice. That's a little bit more like 3D view. Yeah, it's got like an actual <laughs> touch to it, like a feel to it, 3D effect. Yeah. Or... And people are probably going to be wondering, was that one of your designs or just something you found on display? Uh, it's one of mine. <laughs> oh, nice. Good. It's, uh, I, I guess everyone knows it already who was uh, buying displays because it's like eight months on the bestseller page. Ah, okay. I, I need to check now. I haven't looked for a while. Um, we're definitely going to talk about the types of designs you're selling in a little bit and give people tips. Um, but... To begin with, I want to talk about how you got approved into display because that seems to be the biggest challenge for people. It's mm. actually getting into the platform because you need to apply. Um, so what what did you what did you do back in the day? Mm, for me, I applied last year, and I guess at this time it wasn't so hard to get in. Like uh, like this year, for example. Because I, I wrote uh, one application and I got in like one week later. But nowadays, I guess this plate is very, very picky. Same like for Amazon MBA. They are not accepting a lot of people anymore. And I would say that uh, they are not accepting AI art anymore. So if you're trying to sell there, you should probably not uh, apply to this plate with, with uh, AI art. So maybe use something else because I don't is that think what you are... Is that what you used in your application? Did you show them AI yeah. art? Or... L l last year it worked for me and some friends uh... too. But I guess at this time, this year, the site got flooded so hard with AI. So they decided to slow it a little bit down, like the upload limit on display. 
a lot of people went down to one through continually uh, uploaded 10 designs per day and flooded mm. the website with AI art. I guess that's why they choose to put the upload limit down for those guys. But nobody knows exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What did, do you remember what you wrote in the application? Like, what did you tell them about yourself besides sharing? Uh, your I'm artwork? pretty sure I used ChatGPT. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> but uh, I just wrote like four or five sentences and I linked my Etsy shop where I sold already. I had like 50, 60 sales on Etsy at this time. And what were you selling on Etsy? The normal images from I created with Midjourney uh, as digital downloads, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So nothing specific, but I didn't have a lot of sales on Etsy. So I'm, I don't think they are like just looking for guys that are already selling a thousand of uh, designs. They are probably accepting people that are quite new in this business, I guess. But I'm, I'm not sure how it is uh, this year because last year it was a lot easier than this year. Yeah, obviously there's no way to know the exact answer. Like, what, what are they looking for? We can only guess. But it's interesting to hear that you got in uh, fairly quickly with one attempt. Um, so you linked yeah. an Etsy shop. I'm guessing you didn't link a portfolio then. It was just the no. Etsy link, or okay. just just the shop. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Um, because I, I would typically recommend to link a portfolio, but it's interesting to hear that it also could work with a shop. Um, if someone was to add a portfolio instead, do you have any? Do you know any places to set up one? Or mm, uh, if you're selling already on uh, other platforms, probably pick your best sellers. But uh, I guess display is choosing how how they are choosing uh, the people they let in. Nobody knows this. Yeah, that's so... true. Um, and let's let's cut to the interesting part. So we touched on it already. You're, you're selling AI art on there, um, but yeah. is that all you do? Do you have a variety of designs? What sort of designs sell the best for you, basically? That's what I'm interested in. Mm, I'm, I'm spreading a lot and I'm testing a lot in different niches. I don't have specific niche, I would say. I'm, I'm selling mm -hmm. a lot in, in like fantasy anime style uh, for example if you go on the website displayed and you you are looking for bestsellers or the trending designs you will always see it's mostly like fantasy stuff it's anime stuff or star wars for example but yeah we can't use this no <laughs> so uh, so uh, it's it's mostly like fantasy anime stuff like I know a lot of people, they are selling on MBA. They are just uh, uploading the designs from MBA, for example, Father's Day, and those kind of designs with a blank background and a little bit of text and a small design you would use for T-shirts on MBA. I'm pretty sure that this kind of stuff is not working so good on display, because if you just go on display and you search for Father, you get like 125 pages with Father designs and like two weeks ago there was a father's day and you got like one or two designs on the trending page which is for like eight thousand designs not a lot um so i guess it's probably better to use like designs that that show something i have like thousand designs i have not a single design with text on it it could work but in my eyes you don't see designs often with text that are selling good in my eyes yeah, I mean, the comparison between us two kind of proves that because most of my designs are just T-shirt designs turned into displays. And although I've had quite a few sales and I've had some really good months, um, it's nowhere near your numbers. So also looking at the homepage of display, there is like lots of intricate art, like creative designs, and there's nothing really with text on there. Not a lot anyway. Um, so that's interesting. So you, t you pick very broad topics like fantasy, anime do you have a so you said you have a thousand designs right live yeah, on display yeah clo close to thousand thousand around that okay. thousand one hundred okay. i'm guessing you have like a few best sellers that are getting you most of the sales or is it yes. quite a wide array of designs that are selling for you or mostly i have some designs on the bestseller page already which are probably selling very good but uh, if, if i'm talking about good it's like maybe eight or nine sales per day maybe six five, six sales per day for a design that is on the bestseller page. I, I guess a lot of people will see it. So seven or eight sales per day is in my eyes not a lot. 
but uh, it it must it adds up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it adds up with time. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Do you have any other tips for getting sales? Um, because people that are watching that are new to this now they know they have to enter broad niches. But is is there anything else that you do? Any research or any specific style that's worked the best for you? I'm sharing, the, or I shared the designs on Pinterest, for example, but I'm not sure whether this worked for the algorithm because uh, Display is not sharing any information to us about how the algorithm uh, works. But uh, I'm pretty sure that most of the designs uh, I sell, for example, you upload a design and if it's a good design, you will sell it in the next one or two weeks, mostly for me. If it's not selling within one month, it probably dies on the website. But often you, I, I also have designs that uh, I uploaded like five months ago and then on Black Friday they are selling like 200 times, which uh, nobody knows how the algorithm really uh, triggers those designs uh, on display, you know. So yeah, I, st I started on Pinterest. I sh have like 9,000 followers right now, but I stopped last year uploading on uh, Pinterest because a lot of copycats, you know how it is. Mm. So uh, yeah. my, my bestseller, I got like 200 products on Timo, Alibaba and Amazon. So that's why I got like seven or eight sales with Pinterest. You, you get 50% if you get a sale via your link. Um, but that's not worth to share the designs and 500 are stealing it to Timo, Alibaba. That's, that's a problem. Okay, that's where okay. I stopped uh, using Pinterest. But are the, the Pinterest pins, are they not driving traffic back to your display as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I'm, okay, yeah. For example, I'm uploading the design and uh, linking with uh, my display chair and Erlink. But uh, yeah, maybe it affects the uh, algorithm, so you get ranked better on display, but you, you don't really know. Mm, but okay. since, since I'm not uh, doing anything anymore on Pinterest, since last year, like August, I guess. Um, so I, I don't think that it's a big role for me to use Pinterest for the sales. I'm also, I'm also curious, um, last year leading up to Black Friday and all of that, did you already get like a lot of sales in the summer or did it take to the end of the year to kind of mm. see such a, such a big number? the evolution on the website I, I i would start with february now i got like four sales where i started then on on uh, march i got already like i like 400 dollars then it goes to 800 then june uh, may was like 2000 because of the displayed uh, birthday sale which was quite big so three months later i had my first month with two thousand dollars in june it goes down to one thousand dollars and then it grows again a bit to Ju July around 2000 and then on, on August it's around 25, 3000 and then the November explodes with 12,000 years. All right, so it's still, it's still a curve that sort of slowly built up over the year and then peaked at the end. That's interesting. Yes. So it's, it's similar to most people's print and demand experience. I think you, well, your results are a lot more rapid. <laughs> Um, yeah. In terms of the the amount of sales, but the the curvature of how the the sales go up over the year um, seems to be the same. So that's interesting. One thing that that I've had issues with before, and other people have reported this as well on display. If you're selling AI art, um, they often get rejected. So when you upload a new design, do you ever um, have issues with getting the art approved? Uh, yes, a lot. <laughs> um, I guess. Uh, I don't really know how the approval system works on display because sometimes it, it was like I uploaded 10 designs per day. Like I tried to get out as much as possible. So I uh, uploaded 10 designs and there were like two options every time. All 10 got accepted or all 10 got not approved. So uh, I wasn't sure what, what display is checking there because even if you have nine very good designs, and one very bad, all got rejected or all got accepted. It, it, it was so stupid in my eyes. But I found, I found out later, which they fixed, uh, if you upload the first design with good quality, for example, you just put a text in, then every other nine got accepted as well. Oh. 
but but so so you you upload one design with a text like a simple word this got accepted because the quality is good and the others got accepted then as well but uh, they fixed it around last year in june so it doesn't matter anymore and in july they uh, slowed down the upload limit to one so i all or i have to say i stopped uploading in july last year mm -hmm. until until I guess April this year because my upload limit got back to 10 this year. I'm not sure why. Not everyone uh, got back to 10. Maybe they mm. are just picking the best AI artists on the website to get them back to 10 uploads because I already know some people now they have still an uh, upload limit of 1. For me, I got back to 10. I'm not sure uh, how this plate is choosing this. Yeah. All right. Um, what works? What works to get the uh, designs accepted? Um, because for me, I'm getting like eighty percent, ninety percent accepted at the moment, which is very good for AI art. I upscale the images normally, like with a upscaler, to ten thousand to sixteen thousand pixels. Then scale it down to the requirements displayed once to use, like five thousand eight hundred uh, times. 8120 and then i add a camera raw filter with texture and sharpening which for me works most of the time so you 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 will you will get uh, more designs accepted if you use photoshop use camera raw filter delete some pixels that are not so good with the repairing tool and that will do a lot of getting your designs accepted okay okay those are some good tips um, which which AI upscaler do you use to get? Because that's a very big size, right? 10,000 or 16,000 pixels, you said? At first, uh, if, for example, you create an image uh, with mid-journey and you have like 1,000 times 1,500, then you can upscale two times. So the output in mid-journey is like 1,800, 2,500, around this. And then I use uh, imglarger.com where you can just upload the designs and it gets upscaled eight times bigger takes around two or three minutes and then you can just download it and you have a 1000 times 16,000 pixel file and then I just scale it down with Photoshop, crop it, use camera roll filter, edit some pixels that are not that good and uploading it on display afterwards. Do you ever use uh, actions in Photoshop to, to apply the camera raw filter to lots of designs at once or, or do you have to go in and uh, you know, at the moment, edit every I'm... single picture? At the moment, I'm doing it all manually, which is quite time consuming. Yeah, uh, I've, ser sounds... I've searched on, on Fiverr uh, for someone who can make me a script for Photoshop, but I didn't find one at the time because it would save a lot of time as well. Even though if you are uploading like 10 designs every day, mostly I need like one or two hours per day to get this 10 all uploaded, which is for 10 designs. Maybe a lot of time, I'm not sure. Okay, so we've talked about how to how to prepare the designs for uploading. Um, another thing that could be interesting is how, um, how do you write the listings like, or choose the keywords for your designs? Because if it's a, a fantasy topic, I'm guessing there's like a lot of, a lot of broad keywords that you could enter. Um, is, do you have any strategy? Do you look at other designs or do you have a tool that can help? Uh, I'm, I'm not using tools, to be honest. I'm just following the rules uh, you get from displayed. For example, uh, you have like tags, you have key, uh, you have text keywords, uh, description. They always have a guide how to do it as best as possible. And I simply follow those rules, which uh, for me work very well in the past. And I guess there is no, no science behind this in my eyes. But uh, in terms of the AI tools, you said you use Midjourney. Have you ever tested any other AI generators for this, or is that you go to like you always use Midjourney? Well, I, I started with version four last year, where like normal images got four fingers. <laughs> if you <laughs> okay. had a, a, a man on the picture, but uh, I guess it got better and better. Then version five was very good. Version six was even more good. And I guess all other tools are not as good as Midjourney at the moment. Even though uh, if you have like an image, you can even edit it with generated film in Photoshop, which is very good as well. Mm. Even if you want to, for example, you have like a design, uh, you want, you have it like one to one square and you want to get it horizontal or vertical, then you can just use generated fill and the design will afterwards look perfect as well. So 
Um, I stay with Midjourney. I'm not sure that any other programs are quite as good as Midjourney at the moment. So, hmm. yeah, I can uh, I can imagine as well with uh, with time, with it improving and improving, it's easier to get artwork accepted because back in the day with like four finger images, I'm sure Display would have rejected all of those. Um, and I also remember when when my when my images, I, I did try uploading some AI art to Display. And whenever they had some weird artifacts or something looked distorted, like the face or the hands or whatever, then they usually got uh, rejected uh, when uploading. But yeah, Mid Journey is definitely amazing for the sort of art that you see on display. Um, yeah. It's interesting because for, for t shirt designs, I wouldn't use it anymore as my go to. I think there's other tools that have a more similar style for t shirt design, um, like Ideogram, Dali 3. But um, yeah, I, thinking about it i wouldn't really think to use ideogram if i was trying to create a a really nice poster like you see them on display do you have any tips for using mid journey as in any special prompts that you use any features that have helped you out mm, I'm, I'm not using special prompts i'm always writing new ones and for mm. example if you have one good design in your collection already try to get designs that are similar but from the style but not not from the what what you see on the display. I guess the style is very important on display because, for example, uh, the lighthouse I showed at the beginning, there there were like five hundred results from lighthouse on display at the start, and where this got on the bestseller page, there are now like one hundred twenty pages with lighthouse because everyone is trying to get this similar, but it doesn't work. So I guess you shouldn't try to to for example copy a tree and get a other style on it because uh, you you need a unique design to sell good and not like copying something with a different style and it looks maybe similar but it's not the real design so i guess it's not about about copying stuff like this because there's only yeah. just one design on the bestseller page with this don't don't image. copy bestsellers basically yeah, yeah. same as in t-shirt design <laughs> yeah um, it, some, maybe it works sometimes but <laughs> and you, you mentioned that there was only 500 results for lighthouse so do you ever approach it from that angle do you ever look for a, a term like lighthouse or tree or you know an animal maybe and see has it got does it have low results or do you choose the topics randomly? Uh, what what I did at the beginning is like I opened this plate and for example I'm looking for a word like for example I'm looking for chess now and I I don't uh, care how many results there are because I guess if you have a good design this plate will push it so it doesn't matter how many results there are on the platform for the specific keyword but um, it's it's very hard to say what is selling good because. For example, if you go on display.com and you, you look for chess, I guess I there are like, I'm not sure how many results, there are a lot of results, and I got like two or three designs already on the on the first page, but uh, they are selling like one or two times a month, even though chess isn't a small topic, I would say. Um, so if if I have a design on the first page of a specific niche and I see, okay, it gets one or two sales and I stop uploading in this niche and try something else, because if you have a, a design on the first page, which is probably bestseller with one, with one sale in two months, uh, then probably use another niche and try out a new one. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's good you mentioned that because there's no way to really see how, how much are these displays selling. Um, that's a bit of a downside. On Amazon, we get the BSR. You have an indication of how well the signs are selling on display. You're not sure. Um, so yeah, that's that's a good tip, I guess. If you if you're trying different niches, pay attention to where you ranked. Are you showing up on the first page? And then how many sales are you getting? That way, you know, you know should I design more for this niche or or not? Um, how much potential is there here? And I and I guess that's that's the only thing you can see on display. You don't have any tools to check how many sales it got. Like you have like on Amazon, for example. Maybe it's not that accurate, but uh, on display, all you know, filter best selling, and you see what is probably selling, but you never know how often it really sells. So it's very hard to say. Any 
any last tips for uh, beginners about display or anything else we didn't talk about that we think we should cover? Try to get designs that are not simple, I would say. So mm. not, not what like... What do you mean by simple? Uh, so so I'm, I'm pretty sure like designs with a blank background are not selling quite as good as designs which are... I mean, you, you pay like 40, 50, 100, 180 euro for a poster or a, a display. Yeah? Mm. And I don't know whether you would buy a display, for example, for 170 euros when there's just a word on it like Father's Day, Happy Father's Day. So I, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't pay 180 euro for a design with three words on it. So maybe mm. try to get something that's more worth the money if you want that's, to sell as well XL designs and not just the M plates. That's a really good point um, that we hadn't mentioned yet. I'm glad you brought that up because, yeah, disc plates are expensive. The smallest size, the ones that we just showed or that I showed, I think this is like $40, $50, right? And yeah. then the biggest sizes are very expensive as well. So what I've done sometimes and seen success with is rather than just taking my T-shirt design and putting it on a black background, I would put it on like a, a textured background. So there's some more, it looks a little bit more interesting. And you have to think about it. people are hanging it onto their wall, right? And if you just have like a one one colored, uh, one colored massive poster with a bit of white text, it's, it's very boring, right? It doesn't look yeah. that appealing on a wall uh, unless you're going for a very minimalistic style, I guess. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah, even with the new, that new texture effect you show that they offer, you want to have some detail to the design so that makes sense. So if anyone does want to repurpose T-shirt designs, maybe try and uh, and add something to the background to make it more interesting. That's definitely a good tip. Well, I, I guess the Textra one will get bigger and bigger in the next years. They are just choosing randomly some designs every Wednesday at the moment, maybe like 100 Textra designs, which isn't a lot because Display has like 2 million, 3 million designs. So if you get picked one texture, maybe maybe they are adding it in the future to all designs, but nobody knows this. But I guess it's a nice innovation, which is new on the market, which will probably explode in the next years. I think so. Where else are you selling printed demand? I'm selling at the moment on Etsy, which is mm -hmm. not quite as good as this <laughs> <laughs> Uh I guess last year was 1,000 euro minus fees and taxes maybe it's 200 euros then <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, yeah and otherwise i'm tried to sell on metalex which this one here is a metalex this, this is not my design they are like copyright not so it's chinese <laughs> so <laughs> this we catch from a normal customer normally yeah on every other platform they would instant reject this but i guess uh yeah, try different platforms. Maybe try platforms that are not like famous, like Redbubble. Try something more niche. -y. For example, I found Europoster, where uh, you can you can see if you get a sale. For example, uh, you have the order is the order number, and they are selling like six thousand posters every day, which is very 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 much. Um, and they don't have so much artists, nobody knows Europoster, but, but I guess it's a very good platform to sell on. But uh, they, where I started, I got 10% uh, 10 from, from, the, from the selling price, but they added it and now you get for AI designs, you just get one euro. And before you got 10% and for example, if they're selling now a canvas for 50 euro, you get one euro and they take the rest so wow. there's a policy there is i'm that's, that's why i stopped selling there but i guess i have like 80 designs on euro poster and around 100 sales already so it's good but mm -hmm. you just get one euro so when, when did you start on euro poster i've started like six months ago okay, i just okay. have 80 designs uploaded which took about two hours <laughs> Okay, okay. But it, it works, but uh, yeah, the percentage you get is not very, very good. And that's only for AI designs, right? If you had a normal design, would you still get the 10%? Or? Yes, yes, ah, it's okay. just for AI ones. So, But, Discri but the, price, discrimination. the price is still the same. Yeah, the discrimination price is still the against same. AI. <laughs> it doesn't matter, the poster costs 50 euro, doesn't matter whether it's AI or not, but you get, as an AI artist, you get just one euro. <laughs> 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty stupid in my eyes. Yeah. Let's hope they don't do that on other platforms. That'd be horrible. Yeah, um, that would be horrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think, to be honest, display, considering how expensive they are, the, the royalty you receive is also quite small, like in proportion. But um, one of the some of the bigger ones, right? If you get a big size ordered, it's like ten dollars mm. royalty, I think. Or... Yeah, uh, if we are talking now about a sale with no, uh, zero percent discount, then you get for uh, XL poster you get eleven dollar and some cents, um, three dollar fifty for an M poster and six dollar ninety three for an L poster. If, yeah, if there is no uh, zero discount. But normally you are selling a lot with 10%, 20%, 30% discount. And they are always taking this from your uh, earnings as well. I'm not sure um, because, for example, if you sell an M poster, you get $3.50. But normally you would get like four and a bit more because they are taking 20% withhold taxes yeah. and 3% fees. I'm not sure whether... Maybe you can get it back with uh, a tax advisor because they are taking it from your earnings. And yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how this works, but yeah. That's a good point. Um, Display does withhold quite a bit of uh, the royalties. So def definitely, if, if you're selling a lot on there, I would speak to a tax advisor and see if you can claim that back um, from their country. It should be possible. It just might take a bit of you know, fiddling around and, and working with someone else. Um, I, I wouldn't know how to do it either. Um, I, I, I think I managed to get the money back through a tax advisor once, but it, you know, I don't know how to do it myself. I would have to pay someone as well to get it back. Um, so that's a good, good bonus tip. It is quite significant, isn't it? It's like 23. Yeah. Yeah. No. 23%. If you have like 10,000, 2,000, uh, 20,000 sales, it's a lot of money, though. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's true. And you started selling on, on Amazon Merch as well recently? Yeah, in June yeah. now, 1st June. I, I uploaded my first design end of May, like 30 May, mm -hmm. something about this. How, how's that going so far? Have you had any sales yet? or? Mm, I'm currently not uploading consistent because I'm still trying to upload 10 on display every day and I have still a normal job with eight hours. So I try my best and normally I focus still on display and then uh, as a second part is MBA where I, where I have now after 10 days around 44 designs and for sales in 10 days now, which is okay, I guess. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good performance for yeah. the first few days on there. Uh, one to two weeks. What are you planning to do on on Amazon Air on merch? Are you using the same designs as on display, or do you think you'll also try out t-shirt designs? Mm, I don't think that I try t-shirt designs because I still have like thousand designs lying on my uh, computer. I can just upload on Amazon now. Uh, problem is, uh, you always have to crop it a bit because uh, I'm selling for phone cases, pillows, and uh, yeah, the pop sockets. And if you just, you have a design which you used on display with uh, 5,800 times uh, 8,120, you probably can't use this instantly on the phone case. So you have to crop it with Photoshop, um, maybe move it a bit because you have the yeah the camera filter here, you know? Uh, yeah. Then you, you, you probably need to crop it as well. So the design is not overlaying on the camera on your case. So. Yes, yeah, so it's still some extra work to get it optimized yeah. um it's probably a good idea though to focus on phone cases because um most people yeah most people just design for t-shirts or with t-shirts in mind and i'm guessing majority of people wouldn't think to focus on ai art only and then upload to phone cases or some of the other all over print products like pop sockets so it's probably a good uh, good idea to to focus on that first to test it so you might have less yeah. competition uh, and some of the and, niches. And for example, if you are looking on YouTube about MBA phone cases, you not not find a lot. So everyone <laughs> is doing t-shirt. Nobody knows something about phone cases, but I'm pretty sure that the, the phone case niche is very, very big, even on Amazon. So, I mean, you maybe you know companies like Casetify, which are making billions of dollars every year with phone cases. So I'm very, very sure... 
um, that these designs I use for this split, for example, have a good potential on MBA because mostly all people that are uploading uh, T-shirt designs on MBA, they are just copying it to phone cases. And I guess a normal image, like for example, this one here or stuff like this, is maybe selling as well good, not like just a simple text and a little picture. It's more like something new in my eyes. The whole image on the whole phone case, so yeah, it's a bit more, it's a bit more unique. I mean, you will have those yeah. people that would prefer a just a simple text thing, but yeah, of course, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's a good idea to try it out that way. Cool. Uh, thanks a lot for your insights. It's uh, difficult no to find someone who does very well on display um, <laughs> for a podcast, so it's it's nice to get some tips um, for for newcomers or people who want to try it out as well. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for your time. If if anyone has extra questions, uh, is there anywhere they can reach you, like on, on Discord, for example? Uh, yeah, or... they can join your Discord server, for example. Message me. Okay. Yeah, maybe you What's can your... blend in my name. Or yeah, <laughs> we put the name up on the screen uh, on the podcast. Yeah. And uh, yeah, again, thanks a lot for your time. It's great to have thanks you. For, thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Have a great day.